we're going to show you a demonstration about aliasing. Aliasing is an effect that occurs when a signal is sampled below an appropriate frequency. To show you this effect, we've developed a pretty simple LabVIEW code where we're generating a sine wave with a frequency of 10 hertz and an amplitude of 1. We're doing this using the sine wave generator block in LabVIEW. Um, we've set it up so that the original sine wave has 1,000 points per second, so an effective sampling rate of 1,000 hertz, and we've plotted it for 1,000 samples, so that will give us a sine wave for one second with 10 peaks in it overall. Um, we've divided out the output of the sine wave generator to two displays, one showing the original signal and then a second one showing a resampled signal where we're able to resample the sine wave using different sampling rates to hopefully show you some effects of aliasing. So we're initially uh, resampling at 1,000 hertz, and it looks identical to the top. Uh, there's no visual difference you can see between the two. We decrease the sampling frequency to 100 hertz, which is an order of magnitude above the original frequency of the signal. Um, we see that the frequency content remains the same, but we lose a little bit of amplitude in the resampled signal. And this is due to the fact that those peaks and troughs in the original signal are the fastest changing parts. So even an order of magnitude higher sampling rate, we're getting some distortion of the original signal, but the frequency content remains the same. Now, if we decrease it down to two times the Nyquist rate, which is for um, Nyquist rate is twice the original signal and 40 is twice that, um, you start to see some sharp, uh, sharp changes between the peaks and uh, valleys. So you still get the same number of cycles, but the rate of change has uh, drastically increased. Let's decrease the sampling frequency to something right above the Nyquist frequency. So if we're sampling with 25 hertz, we start to see some weird effects in the resampled signal. Um, again, the frequency content does remain the same because we are above that Nyquist frequency, but we're sort of getting this weird amplitude modulation across the signal. Now, if we go all the way down to the Nyquist frequency of 20, uh, we start to see the sharpest changes in frequency, um, but we're still getting 10 cycles. So you still have that information, but the rest of it is drastically off. So if we go right below the Nyquist frequency to 19 hertz, we see that we actually lose the frequency content of the signal, and our resampled signal doesn't really give us any of the original information in the signal, and this can be sort of misleading when you're running experiments or when you're trying to you know, detect a waveform. Now, at the original frequency of 10, you actually get a straight line because you're only grabbing one point per cycle, and that is at the same time each time. Uh, you'll notice that the amplitude is very small because we happen to be sampling right around the zero point each time. So we'll try one more lower sampling frequency of 9 hertz. And here we sort of see something very misleading. We see a sine wave that appears to have a frequency of 1 hertz when our original signal actually had a frequency of 10 hertz. And this is sort of a perfect example of how aliasing can be misleading because we're sort of sampling at different points along each cycle of the original signal. And you know, you're sort of misled to believe that you have basically the wrong signal at the end. Well, there's aliasing for you. Uh, thank you.